What he did was bring up right away the election meddling, and he did that for a reason. One, he wanted him to basically look him in the eye, let him know that, yes, we know you meddled in our elections. Yes, we know you did it and cut it out. And I think President Putin did exactly what we thought he would do, which is deny it. And I think that is what it is. They're going to always have two different stories on this. So this is Russia trying to save face. And they can't. They can't. Everybody knows that Russia meddled in our elections. Okay. U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley says Everybody, UN Ambassador, knows Russia meddled, but her boss, President Trump, has been far less declarative. So, what is the foreign policy impact from his meeting with Vladimir Putin? Joining us now, member of the Foreign Relations and Judiciary Committees, Democratic Senator Chris Coons of Delaware. We'll start with the outcome of the meeting, although I want to get to the Donald Trump Jr. revelations. Uh, how did the Putin Trump meeting go, Senator? Well, Mika, I think on this question of confronting Vladimir Putin on his interference in our 2016 election, uh, Donald Trump uh, stepped up to the plate and whiffed. The idea that we're going to simply agree to disagree and move on, uh, I think, steps aside from confronting the very real challenge, which is that Vladimir Putin and his Russian intelligence agencies fully intend to interfere in our next election in 2018 and 2020. Former FBI Director Comey testified to the Senate that given that Russia has paid no serious price at all, we can expect them to attempt and probably succeed in interfering in our next elections. Imagine how much stronger that confrontation would have been if President Trump had presented Putin with a signed law that imposed tougher sanctions on Russia for their inappropriate and unacceptable interference in our election. Okay, so it didn't go well. Uh, didn't let me, go well. No. Okay. Uh, now to the revelations about Donald Trump Jr. meeting with the Russian lawyer, saying it was about adoption, and then uh, making another statement saying that it was about damaging information about Hillary Clinton, but then it didn't turn out to be that, so they ended the meeting. Just from his statements alone, what do you take away, especially as a member of the Judiciary Committee? Well, for a group of folks who have nothing to hide about their interactions with Russia, they certainly seem to have been hiding a lot. Um, the idea that these three individuals, uh, the president's son, the president's son-in-law, and the president's campaign manager, uh, organized a meeting in order to get the fruits of cyber hacking into their uh, opponent's campaign um, is strongly suggestive of uh, potentially criminal activity. Uh, and the idea that they failed to uh, previously report this despite being required to do so um, suggests that there may well be um, some inappropriate action, some conspiracy, or some obstruction. Now, I can't reach those conclusions as to whether it is or isn't because I don't have that evidence in front of me. But it certainly suggests, based on the New York Times reporting, that this is the sort of thing that Bob Mueller should be looking at closely. Uh, and if we can do so without interfering with Bob Mueller's independent investigation, we should do so on the Judiciary Committee as well. Okay, Elise Jordan. Senator Coons, you've spoken about your concern that Russia is attempting to isolate the United States. And Republicans yeah. have historically been concerned about a foreign policy of isolationism, yet we're seeing, you know, this, you know, switch where Russia is somewhat successfully putting us more in isolation. Do you think that's what we saw this, uh, this past week at the G20? I do. Um, Donald Trump's uh, policy of America first is increasingly turning out to mean America alone. And I'll remind you that President Trump's strategy for how to confront North Korea's aggressive nuclear weapons program, mm. one of our top national security challenges, is to try to organize world pressure on China to get China to put pressure on North Korea. If that's the goal, then the outcome of many of the meetings and interactions that President Trump had with the G20 um, did not advance that goal at all. His withdrawal from the Paris Agreement, uh, his uh, trumpeting nationalism and an economic isolationism um, frankly did not go over well at the G20. And the final communique makes it clear that on some key issues, the United States is increasingly isolated. Yeah, and the, 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 the tweets about a, a cyber, a collaborative cybersecurity, what no. can you comment? I mean, that's, that's, that's beyond puzzling. That's like tweeting out that he'd like to fight drug abuse in America by um, starting a new uh, drug interdiction uh, conference with El Chapo. Uh, <laughs> the idea that somehow the right way to fight cybersecurity uh, is to form some joint coalition with exactly our most capable cyber adversary 
um, it, it's just it defies description. Yeah. All right, Senator. Senator Chris Coons, thank you. Thanks a lot. With Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.